Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve example number 37 from chapter of strays in the book of mechanics of materials by R.C. Hubler. In this example we are being asked to calculate average shear strays in the pins at different locations. If that structure is being loaded with the loading condition as can be seen in this image. So let's solve this example. So in order to solve this example, first of all, we should be knowing the support reactions at different point. And in order to have the support reaction, we should be drawing the free body diagram. So let's consider the beam AB first and determine the reaction on the beam. So let's draw a free body diagram. Let's say this is the beam. This is B point. This is A point. At A point, we have hinge support. So there would be two reactions, the vertical reaction and the horizontal reaction. So let's represent the vertical reaction as RAV and horizontal reaction as RAH. And at B point we have pin support and because of pin support there will be only one reaction and that will be in the direction of the member BC, it means this direction. Since we can see that this member is in this direction so we can have this angle using the right angle triangle. So I'm doing calculations using 10 theta formula. You will be having angle as 53.13 degree. So this support reaction at point B will have force acting at an angle of 53.13 with the vertical. And let's represent that reaction with RBC. And there are some loads that are being acting on this beam. And if we are being given with the P value of 5 kN, so we can have the different loads. This will be of 5 kN at a distance of 0.5 meter. This will be of 15 kN. The distance in between them is 1.5. This is 6 times P. It means 30 kN. The distance in between them is 2 meter. The last one P means 5 kN that has a distance of 0.5 meter from point A and the distance of 1.5 meter from this 30 kN force. So in order to have the support reaction let's use conditions of equilibrium. First let's use third condition of equilibrium which is summation of all moments acting at any point equal to zero. And let's consider first as A point and considering all clockwise moments as positive. So the support reaction which is passing through point A will not be having any moment but uh, all other will have moment. So let's calculate the moment caused by other forces. The moment caused by this 5 kN force will be anti-clockwise hence negative. The moment arm will be 0.5. All other vertical forces will also be causing negative moment. So 30 kN will be having moment arm of 2. 15 kN will be having moment arm of 4. This 5 kN will be having moment arm of 5.5. Now this RPC force is not directed horizontally or vertically therefore it should be converted into its horizontal and vertical components now this horizontal component will be passing through point a so there won't be any moment caused by this horizontal component but the vertical component will be causing the moment and that will be clockwise and the magnitude would be rbc cos 53.13 so positive rbc cos 53.13 one three how about the moment arm moment arm is actually six in this case equating it equal to zero so in this equation only we have one variable which is rbc on doing calculations we are going to get this support reaction of rbc as 41.67 kN. in a similar way we can have the other support reactions for that we can use the conditions of equilibrium at different points now let's consider this third condition of equilibrium at point B. So now in that case, RAH will be passing through the point B. So that will not be causing any moment. But RAV, which will have anti-clockwise moment of RAV multiplied by 6. Similarly, the moment caused by these vertical forces, those all will be clockwise. This 5 of 0.5 momentum, 15 of momentum. 2, 30 with momentum 4, 5 kN of momentum 5.5. Again in this equation we have only one variable which is RAV. So on doing calculations we are going to get this RAV value as 30 kN. 
Now we have got RPC, we have got RAV, but still we are being left with RAH, which is the horizontal force. So for that, we can use the first condition of equilibrium, which is summation of all forces acting in x direction equal to zero. So this RAH will be negative because which is left hand side, but the horizontal component of RBC will be positive. So that will be, we just calculated RBC, which is 41.67 multiplied by sine 53.13 equal to zero. So in this equation, we have RAH as the only variable. So from here, you will be having RAH as 33.33 kilonewton. Now we have got all those support reaction at point A, at point B. Since we need to know the average shear stress in pins at A, B, C point. So for that, we need to know the forces acting on these pins. So the force which is acting at point A is because of RAH and RAV, but we need to determine its resultant. So resultant can be calculated using the resultant formula. For B point, we directly know the force which is acting at B point, which is RBC. And for C, we also know the force which is acting at point C. Now, since it is being given that all pins are in double shear, it means the force will be divided into two parts. So let's talk about the average shear stays at a point. Now at A point, we have two forces acting. One is RAH, another is RAV. So resultant force acting at RA is so ra would be then equal to in the under root rah square and rav square because that is the resultant since we know the value of rah and rav just put the value of those 33.33 square 30 square on doing calculations so we are going to have the resultant force acting at ra is 44.85 kilonewton now let's say that at point a this is the pin so the resultant force which is acting at this pin is 44.85 so it should be resisted by the double shear it means one shear at this point and another shear at this point so this each will be of magnitude 22.42 kilonewton therefore the shear stress at a point will be shear force which is 22.42 42 kilonewton divided by the shear area because we have been given the diameter of the each pin which is 18 mm so pi by 4 d square which is 18 mm you can convert that into meter as 0 0.018 so on doing calculation the shear stress at a point would be 88.1 mpa now for point b and c since the magnitude of the force acting in this member is same Therefore, the shear stress in C and B pin will be same. So let's calculate that. Let's say this is the pin. The force which is acting at the pin, which is FPC, is 41.67 kN. Therefore, it should be balanced by two forces of magnitude 20.83 kN. Now, the shear stress at B and C point would be the shear force, which is 20.83 kN. So, you can convert into Newton divided by the area, which is pi by 4 d square. D is 18. You can convert that into meter. And on doing calculations, you are going to have the shear stress at point B and C as 81.9 MP. So, now we have got the answer, that is the shear at different pins so this is all from this video where we have learned calculating the shear stress in the pins if this kind of loading is being applied and the type of shear is double shear in the pins how the calculation will be done that is being discussed in this video so this is all from this video thank you for watching this video